Amen. Awesome. You can pass those buckets. And as you're doing that, would you welcome Pastor Candice, who's going to do updates. Uh, you're going to preach, right? Okay. Perfect. Awesome. So much fun. Stephen, thank you for bringing the youth up. I totally want to hear a lot of stuff from youth camp. So, um, as you guys are passing the buckets, um, I have four announcements for you. Fun up coming things. It's summertime. You can feel the heat, but we are going to go have fun in the heat together. So my first announcement is baseball game this next Friday. Raise your hand if you are signed up and coming to the baseball game with us. Awesome. We are going to see you there. If you want to come, we still have tickets. We got a whole section together. We have 200 tickets. I'm not sure how many tickets we have left, but I think we have plenty. Um, if you want to come, you can put your phone over the QR code, um, or you can just go to our website, studiogreenville.com. It's under all the stuff I'm talking about is under what's happening. They're $5 a ticket, and uh, it's this Friday, 7.05 is the baseball game. We would love to have you. Last year was really fun. This year is going to be even better because we are in the section that's going to be shaded first. So I'm like, please, can we move to the shade? So that's happening. And then the next thing is on August 5th, we have a water park night. So everyone is welcome, whether you have kids, whether you don't have kids, whether as long as you have, um, you're able to get there, we would love to enjoy the water park together. What better thing to do when it's so hot? So that is going to be at Discovery Island on August 5th. It is a Saturday. It's two hours. And it's, once again, that's $5 as well. To buy your tickets, you can put your phone over the QR code or just go on to StudioGreenville.com. Com. And then we have another Foundations coming up. Foundations is where we, um, our leadership goes over kind of our heart, our vision of studio, and um, what is what we are building, core values, um, culture words, and then you get a chance to interact with our leadership. So if studio is your home church or you're thinking, gosh, I like it here, I might want to stay, I encourage you come and be a part of Foundations. It's two nights. We'll do them on Wednesday nights, the same time youth is happening. So you, you, we asked you to sign up just so we kind of know who's coming. But um, you can do that as well, um, QR code or on the website. And then our next one is we are going to be starting small groups again. We call them studio homes. And we'll start them probably towards the middle, in, middle of September. We will launch them to everybody because we love gathering every week. We, we will love growing in the Lord, worshiping together. But we really are passionate about just getting deeper in our faith, but also in relationship. Because we want studio to be a place where you can come, you can belong, be known, but also be launched into your destiny. Because I believe that there's so much destiny in this room and things that we're called to do individually, but you weren't called to do them by yourself. And you need people to know you, to cheer you on, to champion you, who would even know if something's wonky in your life. Because you can't even tell those things about people when you don't know them. And so we would really highly encourage you, if this is if studios, your home church, that you would get in a home. But to, for us to be able to have a home for you, we need home leaders. And so we are going to do a training. This is going to happen the week after our foundations. And um, it's two nights as well on Wednesday nights. So it's going to be coming up August 23rd and 30th. And we would love if you are wondering, gosh, if there's either a gift of pastoring gathering in your life, gathering people, or you just would love to um, feel like you're in a season that you want to contribute, that you have it in your heart to, to help um, facilitate in your home, I would love to encourage you to come to our homes training. It'll be a great equipping time as well. It'll start the process if you want to. It's an application process to lead a home. And you can ask any questions. We'll help set you up. But um, we will start homes this September and would love to have you if you, to have you start the process if you are interested. And then as well for everybody else, we would love to encourage you to get in a home. We have a, like, I think there's like six homes operating this summer that are open to new people. And then that we will launch a barrage of them in September when school starts. And there's my mic. Okay. And um, so that's coming up. Studio homes training. Love to have you. Okay. So I get the opportunity to speak today because, oh yeah, thank you. I found out this morning, <laughs> Eric, we, we, got, we went to Charleston this week. It was so much fun, but um, we came home yesterday, and he just isn't feeling well, so he's at home, and he just told me to tell you hello. He's um, watching golf, I think, on TV when I left <laughs> with one eye open. <laughs> um, so he's just resting um, and just wanted to say hello and that he misses you all, and he should be back here very soon. 
I get the privilege to speak today. I'm very excited. You know, we just, we were in Charleston. We went Wednesday because our new son just had a birthday. Happy birthday, Mark. So we went to Charleston, celebrated, and it was fun being there because it reminded me when we came out for a trip to figure out where are we going to move, we were looking at a couple different cities. We were looking at Greenville, Charleston, and then the Raleigh-Durham area in North Carolina. And so going to Charleston, and we were walking on the beaches, Sullivan Beach, it's such a beautiful area. And you're like, wow, this is such a cool area. Why didn't we choose this area to move? And I'm like, oh, I know exactly why, but you're having this conversation in my head. Because when we did the research, you know, those are the cities that popped up. And then we came to visit. And I just remember what was so compelling, why we are here in the Greenville area of South Carolina. And I just want to share for a moment what I love about Greenville. And just because I say what I love doesn't mean it's perfect. But, you know, like you can say, oh, I love this about my kid. Doesn't mean they're perfect. But it's good to know what we love and to be thankful for and to really cultivate a heart of gratitude because how we choose to think and look about look at our city will impact how we act, how we talk about it, what we declare over it, and then ultimately how we impact the future of this area. And so I just want to start out by sharing what I love about Greenville. I love so many natural qualities of Greenville, even the trees, the landscape. I love that we are in the foothills of the Blue Ridge. I love that the birds, they're happy here. Like, I love the shade. I could ride my bike almost all the time, even in the middle of the day, because if you're in the shade, it's completely fine, even in, the sum, even in the heat of the summer. So I just love the area of Greenville. I also love the creativity and the art. And I know there's room to grow in these areas, but I just want to tell you, it's here. There is, there is um, energy and there is momentum in this area. I love the entrepreneurship here. Greenville has energy in it that... I wouldn't say it is the exact same level, but it reminds me in Dubai, it feels like there's an outrageous amount of money in Dubai, first of all. <laughs> but then secondly, it's like if they talk about it, they think it, and then they do it. Like we went snowboarding in a mall in Dubai. Like there was actual snow, and if you didn't want to do that, you could go play with the penguins. Like who does this stuff? But like the level of creativity, but not just creativity, with action and follow through. In Greenville, I'm like, what is going to happen in the next month or the next year here? Because there's so much stuff in motion here. It is special to be a part, to be in a place that is growing and there's vision and there's leadership. And I'm, and when I say all stuff, doesn't mean it's perfect, but I'm super thankful for it. And it's something that we get the opportunity to be a part of. Because I've been in cities that never grow, that are still the same size that, that they were because there's the same industry and there's not much economy happening there either. And I just feel like really thankful to be here in this area where there is a lot of vision. There is a lot of leadership. And that's another thing that I love is I love the leadership here. I'm really thankful for it. We got to be a part of Opportunity Greenville with the Chamber. We got to hear different leaders in different areas of Greenville. And one thing that struck me out of everyone I listened to is their heart. They're just really good people and they're doing their best. They don't, they're not perfect. They don't have everything figured out. I could have poked holes and like, let me ask you, city planner, about this. Or, you know, like there's stuff that we all know, like roads, you know, and, and <laughs> <laughs> drivers too. I'm like, that's us. <laughs> I see you out there. <laughs> but we do live here and this is our home. And, um, and I'm excited to be a part of the solutions. I'm excited to be a part of the future. And I'm thankful for people who are willing to give of their lives, of their leadership, to help us get, make this place better, but also build a future that we all want to live in. And that's what I heard when I was in Opportunity Greenville and listening to the different leaders in the, in the different areas in Greenville. And just super thankful for those kind of people. And then I'm thankful for the story and the history of Greenville. Yes, there is a lot of trauma in the history. There's a lot of beauty in the history, too. We've spent time at the Upcountry Museum. I appreciate that they even have a value for history, that, they, that we can actually go and read it. And, um, and even if you're downtown towards the north end of Main Street, there's a whole monument area uh, dedicated to Max Heller, the mayor um, in the 70s, that a lot of the stuff in the downtown Greenville is attributed to his leadership. It's a beautiful story. Have any of you not read that story of Max Heller? If you haven't, I highly encourage you to do it it's on like this, I don't know, circular wall set, 
up, and it's basically in the 70s, he was mayor for, I think for seven years, or, and um, he came over from Austria. He was a Jewish man who came over as a young man from Austria with under $2, that was like 160 or 180 in his pocket, $1.80 or 60 cents in his pocket. And um, he came here because of World War II, because the Nazis fleeing for his life and um, ended up working, and he became mayor, and a lot of the vision and stuff that we enjoy downtown in Greenville is attributed to his vision. And it's just exciting to see people who give their lives for what they believe in, but he was also a lover of people. When you read just about what they attribute to him, and um, he worked at having uh, integrated leadership in the council, but you think about it, just the kindness of God and the sweetness to send a man who f was fleeing for his life because of his ethnicity came to a city in the South. Just, I, you know, you wonder what it was like when there was segregation and we're still working out of the trauma and pain of race stuff, and that's who God sends here as a leader. I'm like, oh, that's pretty beautiful. I want to be a part of that, and it's inspiring. So more than anything, I just say I love Greenville, and I feel inspired by Greenville, and I'm excited about what is happening here, and I'm excited to be a part of the future in Greenville, and I want to be a part of building what's going on here and joining those who are taking leadership in this city. So there's a moment just to share what I love about Greenville. And mind you, it doesn't mean it's perfect, but there's so much to be thankful for, and there's a great opportunity to be involved in what God is doing here. And at Studio, we want to continue to grow in what we're doing, growing a church, but also what does it look like for us to be a part of the city as well. And so we're continuing to pray and get ready and strategize about what it will look like to invest in this area as well. So uh, today I just want to um, take a moment. It'll be super simple, but this is kind of a family word as well as I feel like, um, gosh, just want to encourage us. And it's a continuing to grow. Like, let's keep going. Let's, this is a take a vitamin and do something for our health morning uh, spiritually, but also just as maturity, as we mature in God. So we've been in Greenville for two years at the end of June. We've been having studio for a year and a half on every Sunday since the end of January. And um, when we started the church, we weren't, actually, when we moved here, we didn't start the church for like six months. And so Eric and I were going to different churches every Sunday. Just to get to know them. We would meet pastors. If they wanted to go to lunch, we'd go to lunch with them. And it was so fun to go to all the, a lot of different churches. We went to all different kinds. And I want to say that I got to experience God in a lot of different churches. The expression of faith was very different. And that's, it's good. It's fun for me to get to go to places and go, Gosh, I can worship you, God, whether I know the style of songs or even if they even sing or don't sing. And if they stand up and sit down or read paper, like I am here and I'm going to give you my heart. Um, we got to meet a lot of great pastors. Um, one thing, though, that stuck out to me is when we started our first studio pop-up. I remember Reva just moved here and we did it at um, this old cigar building downtown. And um, something that struck me, we gathered together and we began to worship and sing. And I couldn't even contain myself because the presence of God was so thick and right there. My heart felt so tender. And I'm like, wow, we've been going to all these different places. But what is going on here? How can we worship? And there's so much passion. The people that God has brought here are so hungry for God. And there's so much passion. And it has been super special from day one. I just, want to, I just want to thank you for who you are and what you bring, the level of heart that you bring, but the level of hunger for God that you bring because it impacts and affects everything that we do. And so from the moment we started, it's just been very passionate and, um, and just high caliber people as well. But, you know, we come from a passionate people. I mean, we, we came from Bethel. And you don't do, I mean, even I think of um, Eric's dad, Bill, like you just go all in no matter what you do. I mean, his message is revival, and it's revival, and it's revival. And he wasn't going to change the subject. And so, I mean, that's what we were raised and got the opportunity to be a part of. And I'm so thankful for it. Um, but one of the things that I began, oh, we, actually, before I go there, I just... Um, one, so we came and started the studio, and the studio, we, st we had three culture words that we wanted to start with. It was alive, devoted, and curious. 
We said that we are alive in God. Like that's who we want to be as a people, that we are saying yes, but we'll take everything that God's given as well. Fully alive, not half alive, not half dead. We are here fully. And, um, and then we're also devoted fully to God and to each other. That when we say yes, we are saying it wholeheartedly, fully devoted. And then the other one was curious disciples. That as we follow Jesus, we're not going to pretend that we know everything and that we're still alive and breathing and we're going to stay curious about all the things of God and what he's doing in the earth and just continue to be learners as well. So those were our three culture words. And then one of the main pillars that we wanted to start with, and we have multiple ones, but one of them is we aim to be a multidimensional community. That was a big set of words that we put together that we're like, what do we mean by that? It was culturally, culturally ethnically, but also generationally. Like we, not, we're not just diverse. It's not just a couple things. We really have a heart to gather uh, multidimensional types of people. And I tell you, Studio, you have done a good job because you are all very different. And we're growing in different areas. I say culturally and ethnically, we're continuing to grow. And I'm, thank, I'm thankful for that. I didn't realize, even when we set this up, we're still learning about the area. I didn't realize that when you go to churches that we would go to all Latin churches and Eric and I would be the only, and Tanasha, we, all three of us went together, we'd be the only non-Latin people. And we would go to an all black church and we'd be like one of the four people that are not black. And then we'd go to an all white church and Tanasha would be one of the only people that was all, um, that was black. And just, it was such an experience because I've, um, had not been to so many churches in the South. There were a few that were intermixed, but there are norms here. And so it is interesting that we come here and we're like, we actually are passionate about multidimensional, of all coming together. I think it just makes life more exciting. You know, and I read Revelation 7, 9, and I get excited. I'm like, that's what we're going to be doing in heaven. Revelation 7, 9 says, after these things, I looked and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, all nations, tribes, people, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out in a loud voice, saying, salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and the Lamb. We're going to be doing that in heaven. We're on the earth right now. I want to do it with you now. So there's, an, uh, there's something burning in our hearts, and we're in it for the long game. If you don't see it represented right now, don't worry. We're not done. We're just getting started. We're a year and a half old. And I just want to thank you as well for continuing to be on the journey with us. Because I understand it is a journey. Because we didn't start out fully having everything built out. We're still continuing to add things a little at a time. But I also realize that it takes, it requires a lot, this multidimensional thing that we're like, yes, we're doing this. And then coming, and it's not just because we're in the South. I think it's because we're humans. We're humans, and when we say multidimensional, it just means we're talking about things that are a little bit different than what we individually um, are used to. So in the first, let's see, in May, it was a year ago, May, uh, our staff went to a conference at another church, and we were just excited to go be a part of something else, went to the conference. It was a great conference, and um, it was our staff, which is, just so you know, Eric is the only man on our staff, but we did not do that intentionally. It just happened. And it won't always stay that way. It's just what it is, how we started. I don't know, Reva just happens to be a woman, and Amy happens to be a woman, and Tanasha happens to be a woman, and so am I. And then there's Eric. So we are at this conference, and it's Eric and the women. We're <laughs> and, um, and we had a great time. And at the end, towards the end, they do a Q and A, and it was um, it was great. And it was like Christine Kane, John Tyson, Bible Project guy, another guy, and um, they have great Q and A. But one of the last questions someone asked, "Hey, you guys, uh, we have a question. You're not from the South, any of you, and you don't live in the South. But um, as Christians in the church in the South, do you see any blind spots in the church in the South?" That was a question they asked him. So we're just sitting there. You know, we're like the newbies on the block, you know. And we're just in the middle, kind of middle side back in the room. And they were like, oh, yeah, that's easy. Because all of them do ministry all over. But they are familiar with the South. And um, I can't remember who answers first. I think it was Christine Kane. And she says, 
oh yeah, that's easy. I travel all over and in all different streams and um, it's very apparent that you suppress women in the South, <laughs> in the church. And we we're like, oh, okay. I mean, this is education for us too because I don't know the South that well. So we're like, oh, okay, South, the, and the women, okay, in the church. And, um, and then the next one says, um, someone says, oh yeah, in race, there, there is stuff with race in the church and you can still feel it. I'm like, oh, I mean, that makes sense. I've been to different churches and it's just different than any place I've ever lived because it's very unique ethnic, ethnic, ethnically at different churches for the most part. And, um, and then someone else says, oh, in the Holy Spirit, in the church, the Holy Spirit is not really that welcome either. And they're like, oh, okay. And, um, and then Christine Kane adds, oh, yeah, and I travel around and God has just made my ministry more to all different types of streams and churches. And I've noticed that wherever churches suppress women, they generally suppress the Holy Spirit too. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So we're sitting there like, whoa, this is where we moved. Wow. <laughs> and then we look down the road and I'm like, there's Eric and all these women. And then I'm like, wow, and two of us are black. And I'm like, huh, and we love the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Look where God placed us. <laughs> so at that moment, I realized our very nature and presence is offensive. <laughs> like we didn't try to do this. We weren't, we, there was no plan. We weren't like, oh, let's just hire women. Let's just make some of us colored. Let's, like, this is just who our family was. And then I'm, like, sitting there, like, wow, God, this is interesting. Are you sure you put us in the right spot? You know, then I was, like, actually, all of a sudden I feel like an arrow. It was ex exactly the right spot. And you just be who you are. And you love me. And you guys do. You guys just step in. And there's a lot. There will be a lot of grace. I'll provide everything that you need. And it was in that moment I realized, like, ah, oh, it's okay that we're different. We all need a little bit of different. And there's a grace when God calls us. But our very nature being offensive was like, okay, so what is that going to require of us? Because what I also saw over the last couple of years, I think COVID definitely made some of us a little crazy. I mean, even if some of us who weren't crazy, maybe we got a little crazy. Because I got the opportunity to pastor and walk with people as we're posting things online. And what are we doing, people? It just exacerbated things. You know, you keep people in their houses. Who knows what will come out of people's mouths? They're off their phones. <laughs> but one thing that I got con this little, con I don't know, concerned or just wondering, I love that we come from a passionate people. We are a passionate people. Like, I'm not going to deny that. And I don't want it to diminish. We're people of deep conviction. We'd be willing to jump off of lots of cliffs and even move to new places. I'm, I'm really proud of everyone, just so you know. Like, I, I don't say that because I am ashamed. I'm very proud of this. But one thing I did see is in the deep conviction and passionate realm during, after COVID and all the opinions and people posting, I also saw just stuff going against other people and even Christians against other Christians. And, and I just wondered, God, is it possible to grow in deep conviction and passion for you and still love other people? Like, are loving God and loving people mutually exclusive? Is it possible to grow in both? And I want to say that today, that is what exactly my heart is. At Studio, that we do not tone down our passion. I don't want you to be, live with less conviction. I want you to be willing to jump off cliffs. I know who's in this room. I know who's in this room. And I just want to say we're not going to stop. We're going to keep going. But I do want to say I think we can do it and still increase our love for humanity and still increase our love for each other. But I do believe and I can feel the stretching. I can feel the stretching because studio... You are multidimensional. Do you know that a lot of you come from a lot of different streams in the church? Some of you are very comfortable with the things that we do and when people scream and cry and do whatever. And some of you are like, 
what is going on here? This is a little weird. It is very weird. I don't know if you know, God is actually kind of weird. Like, and when he comes and touches you and feels you and you get love like you've never experienced before, it's sometimes hard to be like, I look so self-controlled and normal right now. You, you see hearing a little bit in our youth when they're talking about what happened at worship, those girls, thank you very much for being brave enough to come up here, by the way. But God is touching our young people. And just so you know, it doesn't always look pretty. Do you know they said, and we were crying. We were crying during worship. That was probably the nice way of saying it. Because when you feel broken or you, you feel love and God makes things whole, it doesn't always look pretty because you can't contain yourself. You can't even compose yourself. And it's not because you're weird. It's because you're human. And I just want to say, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going after the Lord. I don't want to ever just live a normal life. We're not trying to build normal things. It's not like I want to make people uncomfortable, but comfort isn't, comfort isn't our first goal. I actually want to see, we want to see you healthy. We want to see you whole. We want to see you filled with the Lord. We want to see your families healthy. We want to see your kids on fire, yeah. on fire for God. We, want to, we don't want to live normal. But I stay with the same question. Is it possible to grow in our love and our conviction for the Lord and still love and grow in our love for humanity? We believe that it's possible, but I tell you, we're going to have to grow. I do believe that um, being around people that are different so like a lot of us, we come from different places in the church. I acknowledge that and recognize it. We also come from different families. Some of our families are really loud. Some of our families are quiet. Some of our families are really artsy. Some of our families are sporty. I mean, you're gonna, we can go in every direction. We just come from different families. We also come from different places. Sometimes I say things and people will be like, oh, that is so West Coast. I'm like, okay. They're like, oh, that is so, you're just so liberal. I'm like, I, do you know where, you must be confused. You're thinking California is a small little place and we all live in Los Angeles. I'm from Reading. It is very similar to here. <laughs> but we, we carry different things because of the places that we're from. And that's okay. It's actually beautiful because it makes up, our experiences make up a lot of what we bring to places and who would have shaped us. And also it impacts our perception on things. When we see things and someone comes in loud, I might be like, awesome, I'm home. I had an Italian grandma. She was a little louder. And then someone else might be like, ooh, they're scary. They're loud. I'm like, oh, no, they're not mad. They're just loud. If you ever travel in places when you're American, you realize sometimes you're the loud people. We were in Japan. I won't say who was running down the trains and swinging on all the things, those two little girls that came with us. But the Japanese weren't like that. They were just very neat and appropriate. And, um, and I felt very American. And, you know, I want to say that, yes, we have a lovely family. We try, we try to be respectful and everything. But there are norms and cultures. And so with that, like having different cultures together, it sounds so beautiful and worshiping. But then we have to get used to some are going to be louder, some are going to be quieter, some are going to be more emotional, some are going to be more logical. Some There's just different cultures that we carry. And then different ages. Well, that's just so millennial. Well, you are so boomer. Well, you are so like, however, you, however we want to describe or organize people, there are norms that we grew up with. And there are like, yeah, cell phone, what, when I was growing up? I think the internet was started, like, I, our um, email was, we were in college. I didn't even have an email. But cell phones, I mean, my kids, I don't even know when I got one. See, they were in elementary school, maybe. So it is something that they've grown up with. And your kids, what your kids are going to, what their norms are going to be like are very different than even my kids' norms and my norms. And so just saying, as humans who desire to be around people that are different and even multidimensional, what does it require of us? It sounds fun, but it just requires us to grow, to grow. And what I want to basically as well talk about is how do we hold space for each other? Because I believe that for us to actually do this thing together and grow even further into, 
I feel like who God has called us to be. My prayer is that God would teach us how to hold space for one another. And what does that actually mean? Holding space. First of all, I think one thing that helps is proximity. And sometimes the more you know, the weirder it can get. <laughs> but it's also really easy to judge and accuse when someone's really far away. And it's easier to be afraid. That's the one thing I think that happens when I see different camps post different things. I don't do this, but go online and <laughs> Bethel Church <laughs> and what comes up on Google. And the things that people say, and I, and I remember even being in Reading, and people would tell me things about Bethel Church because it's so scary, and you guys do this and that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I understand. I mean, I, it's not my goal to protect Bethel. We just worked there, and we loved it, and we were pastoring there. But, like, I get it. Everyone has different experiences. But a lot of times I'd listen to the people, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I, I hear your fear. Have you ever been there? Yeah. No, I would never go there. Da -da -da. I'm like, wow, you have a lot of opinions for not even coming there. I don't know. You know, it's just, but as humans, we are very happy and comfortable with opinion land. And even I, what, what you think about other churches and other movements, and if you want to jump on the Hillsong wagon, you know, I was like, oh, I don't, have you ever been there? They're actually really amazing people, but they are humans. You know, sometimes things do go wrong. But as we're wanting to grow in multidimensional, one of my first things is to be able to hold space for people is really would we be willing to get close to each other and get close to not just the people that look like you and the people that come from the loud families or the people that come from the, a family that has kids. If I was single, could I get together with someone who had a family? Or if I had a family, could I invite someone who was a single with me? Or if I was 20s, in my 20s, would I have room in my life for someone who was over 60? I mean, you name the direction of how different you want to be. But could we draw near to each other and get closer? In One Blood, which is the John Perkins book that I love, it's, it feels so gospel to me. But there's a quote, an African proverb, and it says, When I saw you from afar, I thought you were a monster. When you got closer, I thought you were an animal. When you got closer, I saw that you were human. But when we were face to face, I realized you were my brother. And the thing about people is we're all human. I haven't met a person that wasn't human. And from afar, you could look perfect. You could look extra messy. You could look like a lot of things. You get closer. And sometimes you just realize people are doing the best they can. And even at our best, sometimes we still lack. And sometimes we still smell. But we're doing the best we can. Can we have grace enough to hold space for each other? Even in our differences and even when we don't understand. Because we, oft, we often fear what we don't understand. So I would ask Studio if we could continue to grow in even areas that we might be afraid of, where we maybe have previously judged or accused. You know when you judge or accuse, you're not looking like your father? That's not Jesus. So when we want to, we, and there's places in our lives, and we might not even realize where we've judged, judged and accused. Those things sometimes don't come up until you realize, why do I feel so weird here? Oh, I don't actually like anything here. Why don't you like it? Oh, because, well, like I was getting on a plane once. Here's my own um, confession. I was getting on a plane. I, I forget we were going somewhere in Europe, or maybe we were coming home from Europe. And on the plane, there was an Arab man with a, um, a couple Arab men with um, head wraps turbans and um, I'm like great well this was after 9-11 and I was something maybe nervous and I think I had my kids with me and I thought oh and then I saw they had family and they had kids with them and I was like oh good they have kids with them I feel better I'm like what is that I had fear because of something that happened and I projected it onto them and I was playing right into the same accusation judgment that I don't even want to be a part of but I I didn't realize it until I was like, why am I nervous and why am I, now do I feel better? Oh, because I just played along with what everything else that the media was saying and what I chose to partner with. So sometimes we not, not, might not realize where we, where we have fear. or where. But what I want to ask today is could we ask God to grow us in this area? And when we realize that we're partnering with fear or we put walls up, like, oh, whoa, did they just say Holy Spirit? Put the wall up. They're crazy. Or did they just say they were Baptists? Whoa, you don't know that. Like, just put the wall up. Like, could we ever, could we lower down our walls a little bit? But I know that we need God's help to do this. Because there are reasons we have walls. It's not because we're crazy. 
It's because we maybe had a bad experience or something was scary that you saw from afar or heard a story. But for us to be the body that God calls us to be, we have to lean in. We have to get closer together. And I just, there's three things that I want to encourage us with, and I'm going to close, is um, I do believe that one of the things we're going to need to grow in is humility. For us to actually be the body, Colossians, 1 first, first Corinthians 12 talks about the gifts, diversity, and unity in the body that we're all members of one body. There's one spirit, one God. I'm like, that's what we're doing here. And we're only part, we only know in part. Can we grow in our humility to know that we only know part? Like we might not know the whole thing. Jim McNeish, a coach that we've been working with, a Scottish coach, his definitions of humility was um, super impactful to me. His definition was, humility is having an appropriate relationship with my opinion. It's like, oh, I need to grow in humility. To know, like, yes, we have opinions. Can we have an appropriate relationship with our opinion? We might not know everything. So humility is the first one. Second one is, can we grow in our curiosity about other people? Like, maybe we don't know it. Maybe we don't understand it. But can we be curious enough to find out, like, what is your story? What do you think? How do you see things? Wow, I'd love to get to know. Wow, what kind of food do you eat? Maybe I could try it. Can we be curious about each other? And then lastly, in our ability to grow in holding space for each other, is learning to triangulate truth. Truth meaning, if I know that I see in part, like I have a perspective, and my perspective and my perception on things is because I am from Northern California. I'm from colder weather. When you add humidity and heat, I just get a little bit weird already. Things start looking weird. It gets blurry and sweaty. <laughs> already perception starts to play in, you know. But if I can recognize and have enough humility and curiosity and know I only, I might see things uniquely. And because I was raised in the family that I was raised in, I had an alcoholic stepdad. I mean, there are things that really affected and shaped who I am. When I go through an experience, would I have enough humility to triangulate? Meaning, gosh, that was really weird. I, that kind of, that bothered me when they came in really loud. Reva, can I ask you a question? When they came in really loud, was it scary to you? Candace, wow, thanks for asking. No, it wasn't scary at all. I was with them before, and they were just really excited and happy. Oh, that's really helpful to know because it reminded me of my alcoholic stepdad who would come in the room like that and slam the doors. Wow, I had an experience. You had an experience. You left with one perception. I left with another. Wow, let me look over here. Julie Kennedy, you were there too. Can I ask you how it was for you when that went down? Oh, yeah, it made me a little nervous, but no, they're, I, I know who they are, and they were great. I know I'm not worried at all. Wow, I have a little bit of a wholer truth from one experience by being willing to ask two other people that were there as well. But actually have enough humility to know mine wasn't the only experience there. So as we come together to be a multidimensional community, Studio, I just want us to continue to grow in our, in our conviction, our passion for the Lord, but also for each other, that God would expand us and um, increase our ability to hold space for each other. Will you stand with me right now? And Michael, would you come up on the stage? I'd like to invite Michael Lechleitner up here. Michael, yeah, give him a round of applause. I was looking at, uh, on Instagram, and I saw a picture that, uh, or an artwork that he did, and I was reading the description of it, and I thought, I would love Michael to share this artwork, and even to share what was in your heart behind it as well, because I just felt like it's a big part of my heart as well. So I read this book, Art and Faith by Fujimura, and he talks about common ground and a variety of experiences, and so... Uh, I've got all kinds of trees, different sizes, different shapes, different types, but one soil, one ground. And for me, uh, I recognize that my brothers and sisters are much different than me. And I value, when I look at the woods, the diversity. And I value the diversity that God is building within our congregation. And so this is my attempt at uh, capturing that.
And what's interesting, when I was talking to Michael briefly before, I was sharing just a little bit my heart about coming together and even being able to value each other. And, um, and even our experiences, sometimes how we put walls when we have experiences or hear things about other people or churches. And you were even sharing just briefly, like your own experience with Catholic. Would you be willing to share that? I grew up Anabaptist Mennonite, and we had a book about yay thick, yay big, and yay big called Martyr's Mirror. And it chronicled all of my ancestors who were murdered by the Catholics in uh, the 1400s, 1500s. And so, uh, they were always written off as, you know, the whore in Babylon, and so I never wanted anything to do with Catholics. Well, then I started meeting these spirit-filled Catholics, just full of the love of Jesus and the full of his presence, and it was like, <laughs> it blew my boxes. I was not prepared for that, but... Man, they've become, you know, I have been so enriched because I was willing to open up that part of my life. Yeah, and my hope is that as we are closing today, if you want to grab a hand of the person next to you, I actually feel like there, we know there's a blessing in unity, mm. but I also know there's a cost. There's a cost when we say we want unity and we want to, to move forward together. It actually requires more of us. And the thing I know about God is he's such a good provider. Yeah. Holy Spirit, you know it says in the word that the Holy Spirit is the one who actually puts the love of God in you. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. And you know it says one of the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. I mean, that's, the first one is from the Holy Spirit. So today I actually just want to pray and ask that the Holy Spirit would help us, that he would grow us in our capacity to hold space for each other. And Michael, would, just, would you be able to pray for us? I'd love to. Father, I just want to thank you so much, Lord, for your heart being revealed and being released in our midst, Lord. Lord, it says, your word says that in Acts, great grace was upon them all. And Lord, I pray for a release of that grace upon us, Lord. Grace, Lord, to extend the hand, Lord. Grace, Lord, to embrace the differences, Lord. Grace to recognize that our common ground is you and your blood and your life within us your holy spirit flowing through us lord we say yes afresh to you lord and what you're wanting to release in our midst lord release in us and through us lord father i thank you lord for the opportunity to step into it lord and father i pray for a grace lord <laughs> for fresh vision lord yeah. for a fresh way lord of of getting beyond the things that have held us captive, Lord, that have kept us from uh, experiencing the fullness, Lord, that you would have for us. Lord, we bless, we bless, Lord, what you're doing in our midst, Lord. And God, we say yes in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. And before you move, can I ask any home pastors, home leaders, um, studio leadership, if you could move to the wall on my right. We love to be able to pray for you. If you are here and you would like more prayer, if you are battling sickness in your body or you need healing in your family or there's anything that you'd like prayer for, we would love to pray for you. We have a team over to my right and um, they would love to pray for you. Um, other than that, you guys, it's wonderful. It's honestly one of my biggest pleasures to be able to be with you uh, weekly. We love you guys. Have a wonderful day, and we will see you soon.